Hello and welcome to the news at 7 and NTA International. I'm Comfort Amadou. Let's start with the headlines. <music> President Buhari salutes media practitioners as the world marks spreads freedom day. Mock state fine-tuned lockdown procedures to safeguard citizens against COVID-19. And Pope Francis seeks great international cooperation as search for COVID-19 vaccine continues. Many thanks for staying tuned with us on the news. Now, May 3rd is celebrated worldwide as World Press Freedom Day. It's an act as, it acts as a reminder to government of the need to respect their commitment to press freedom. It is also a day of reflection among media professionals about issues of press freedom and professional ethics. This year emphasizes on paying tribute to journalists who have lost their lives in the line of duty and how to promote verified information against COVID-19, particularly on the social media. Now the theme for 2020 is journalism without fear or favor. And President Mahmoud Buhari has reiterated the commendation he extended to Nigerian media in the last two broadcasts to the country, applauding the good work they have done and are still doing as the nation confronts COVID-19, the unseen enemy. In a message to the special advisor to the president, media and publicity, Femi Adishino, on the occasion of World Press uh, Freedom Day, celebrated every 3rd of May, President Buhari said the role of the media in keeping people informed and educated on the Perilous virus cannot be overemphasized, cannot be overemphasized, and he applauds the role the Nigerian media have played so far and charges that they continue until the world and our country are finally free of this greatest health challenge in the recent history. Reflecting on the theme of a World Press Freedom Day 2020, Media for Democracy, Journalism and Elections, in terms of disinformation. President Buhari notes that Nigeria has a very unhealthy dose of disinformation. Fake news, hate news pervade by people who use media platforms, particularly the digital variant. And Speaker House of Representatives Femi Bajabemila on the occasion also of a World Press Freedom Day has taxed Nigerian media on factual and developmental reporting while lauding the doggedness of the Nigerian media in reporting and helping in finding solutions to the challenges facing the country. The Speaker says it would not be it would not be out of place to urge the media practitioners in the country to be more factual about reportage of activities in the society with a view to promoting development. In a statement signed by his special advisor on media and publicity, Larry Lassisi, the speaker said that Nigerian media must rise to the challenge of fake news, especially as the country battles the coronavirus pandemic. And joining us now in the studio is the FCT Chairman of the Nigerian Union of Journalists, NUJ, and uh, Comrade Emmanuel Ogbeche to look at issues on media, uh, COVID-19, and the challenges of fake news. Thank you very much, Mr. Emmanuel, for joining us in the new uh, studio to shed light on Press Freedom Day. Thank you very much for having me here. All right, today is World Press Freedom Day. Um, could you help us uh, put uh, into perspective the challenges that the media uh, constantly face uh, in carrying out their duties, obligation, particularly in this particular period of uh, coronavirus? Yes, um, thank you very much. Um, the theme for this year, which is um, journalism without fear or favor, is very instructive because it speaks to the challenges journalists faced even in ordinary times. Now, with the COVID-19 pandemic, the issues that have been bothering journalism in our country, such as poor working condition, the issue of threat and harassment by state and non-state actors, the issue of um, inadequate um, conducive working environment have all been brought to bear. Since um, the COVID-19 um, pandemic, happened here in Nigeria. We've had um, instances where journalists in the performance of their duties have been harassed and threatened by state actors and even non-state actors. And I could give you a few examples of those. Um, we know that um, in a certain state, in Ebony in particular, 
the governor had threatened um, journalists in the performance of their duties. And that doesn't speak well to the coverage of this pandemic. Because at this time, we require journalists to operate freely and unhindered. The gratifying aspect of it all is that the president recognized early enough in his initial broadcast that journalists are a critical part of the COVID-19 effort and gave a free pass to all journalists and media workers in this country to move about unhindered because we require and we need credible, verified information. And that cannot happen in an atmosphere of fear. But regrettably enough, we've had um, instances here, including here in the FCT, where uh, media owners have um, elected not to provide personal protective equipment and conducive environment for our members and the media workers in general to thrive. And also, when um, journalists operate in an atmosphere of fear, like we, it, it, there's a particular matter we are trying to resolve now, where um, a very senior colleague made um, comments regarding the burial of um, the um, immediate past um, chief of staff, late, you know, and the individual was suspended for raising um, concerns about um, what happened at that barrier. So we, 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 we're faced with various challenges, but um, the good news is that uh, journalists in Nigeria and in the FCT in particular have demonstrated their resilience and commitment to the constitutional guarantee as um, captured in section 22 that, John, that the media and its um, operators will hold government and its officials accountable to the Nigerian people. And that we have done admirably well. All right. Um, you know, far. as you know, fake news is fast eroding uh, the good work uh, the media is doing uh, in difficult uh, times such as this. And um, it's affecting their, dis uh, is it uh, actually affecting the dissemination of uh, the factual reporting of information? Yes, um, f fake news, misinformation, and disinformation seem to be on the rise because um, we've had instances where wild um, health um, prescriptions have been offered by non professionals. We've had um, conspiracy theories concerning the COVID 19. This has been um, a very um, big challenge to core journalists on the field because uh, we all agree that with the rise of uh, the social media, the, there is also the tendency for fake news, disinformation, and misinformation to thrive. But um, the good news is that traditional media is standing up to be counted. And it also brings us to the point where we continue to ask governments, its agencies, ministries, departments, to be transparent and to be open to the media. Once you have factual information at your fingertips, there is no way fake news and misinformation will thrive. Don't okay, start, um, we, it is a challenge. We, uh, Mr. Emmanuel, we have cases of uh, security operatives uh, maltreating journalists covering uh, the lockdown in some parts of uh, the country. What's the NUJ doing uh, to build a better working relationship with security agencies in the country? Yes, well, we've continued to engage um, robustly with um, various security agencies. Um, it's a two-way thing. Sometimes you do not detract from the fact that um, some of our colleagues can be overbearing but that doesn't give any an, um, excuse for uh, security personnel to be high-handed. Thus far, we, we, are, we are pleased that um, the number of um, um, so, um, harassment and threats is uh, on the decrease, and uh, we we'll continue to engage with um, security personnel across the country to ensure that journalists are given unfettered access in the course of performing their duties. All right, thank you so much for that insight on the news uh, at 7 on NT International. We're very grateful to have you always in the studio. Many thanks, Mr. Emmanuel. Thank you very much. All right, global coronavirus cases passes 3.4 million as curve flattens uh, in some countries. Joyce Ometu is here with a weekly roundup of the pandemic worldwide. <music> Outgone week started with 1,182 cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria. But as at 11.55 p.m. 2nd of May, 
record by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control showed that the country has registered 2,388 confirmed cases and 85 deaths. The current tally indicates an increase of 1,206 cases in seven days. Out of the 35 states affected, Kogi and Cross River are the only states without the virus. Meanwhile, Lagos remains the state with the highest number of cases, registering a total of 1,068. Kanu has 313, FCT 266, Gombe 96, and Borno 75. Below the charts, Plateau has three, Abia and Imo has two each, Benue and Anambra has one each. Nigeria is currently the most impacted in West Africa, followed by Ghana, where over 2,000 cases have been recorded, and Guinea, with over 1,000 cases. Africa registered 30,329 infections at the beginning of last week, but the latest data by Africa Center for Disease Control, as at 6 p.m. Sunday, show that the cases on the continent has surpassed 40,000 as the total number of confirmed infections in Africa is now 44,242, an increase of over 13,000. So far, Lesotho is the only country without the coronavirus in Africa. Globally, a grim milestone was reached in the outgone week as the world passed 3 million confirmed cases of COVID-19. As at 26th of April, there was a record of 2,956,897 cases with 203,884 deaths. But figures from Waldometer as at 6 p.m. 3rd of May indicates an addition of more than 550,000 new infections and nearly 42,000 fatalities from last week. The current death toll is now 245,584, while infections now stand at 3,514,039. Now here is a roundup of some key coronavirus developments in the outgone week. Infections in U.S. passed the 1 million mark as the country recorded 2,909 deaths on Friday, the highest daily death toll in the U.S. And 55 journalists across 23 countries have died from coronavirus since outbreak. And that's it from here. Many thanks for staying. I am Joyce Ometu. Pope Francis has called for international scientific cooperation to discover a vaccine for the coronavirus and said if any successful vaccine should be made available around the world. Pope Francis, who delivered his Sunday address from the Papa Library instead of St. Uh, Peter's Square due to the lockdown in Italy, thanked uh, those around the world who are providing essential services. He encouraged international cooperation to deal with the crisis and uh, combat the virus which has infect infected nearly 3.5 million people and killed more than 240,000 people worldwide. The European Union leaders have pledged to raise billions of euros towards the global fight against the pandemic. Consequently, the leaders are supporting the World Health Organization's call for joint action. They announced the launch of an Access to COVID-19 Tools Accelerator and a global cooperation platform to accelerate and scale up research development, access and equitable distribution of the vaccine and other life-saving therapeutic and diagnostics treatment. You're still watching the news at 7 on NT International. More stories in a moment. Don't go away. know that our enemies have no face they are indigents of no state they come from no place and if this boat capsizes every one of us will go under so when the drums sound let everybody answer do not say I am the Iroku when the forest is burning do not say I am the Obechi when the forest is burning our differences will not stop us from perishing together so when the drums sound let everybody answer
is to say a big thank you to all the healthcare workers who put their lives on the line working in all the 36 states of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, especially Lagos, Kano, Ogun, and Abuja, to ensure that we beat COVID-19 in the least possible time. Thank you so much. You are our superheroes. This message is from the Governor's Wife's Fora, the wife of the Vice President and the First Lady of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thanks for staying tuned with us on the news. Now, the compulsory seats at home order by the federal government in two states of the Federation and the federal capital territory, Abuja, is one experience which many Nigerians never anticipated. But for the coronavirus pandemic, as this lockdown is, however, being relaxed, there are questions on lips of many, especially what Nigerians have learned about the COVID-19 and how they will comply with the guidelines after the lockdown. Do India is our guide. It's a deadly disease and it can kill affected young, old, rich, poor. I learned how to wash my hand, put hand sanitizer, and I should not put my hand in my eyes, my nose, and I should not touch my face. And before I eat, I must wash my hand. That was what I learned. No doubt, Nigerians, especially in Lagos, Ogun, and the Federal Capital Territory, where the total lockdown order was carried out, have learned a lot in these past days of the order. But how well are they going to sustain the instructions given by medical experts and, of course, the tax force is a question that remains on the lips of many. Those who will be violating in the FCT, should there be overloading of passengers in the vehicle, those who are not maintaining uh, the issue of having sanitizers, having a uh, face masks, there will be so much enforcement going on, not only of individuals, of supermarkets and several other areas. We have to start from somewhere, which I feel it's okay for some people to start going out. May not be everybody actually. And it's actually okay at the same time that for the fact that they have been able to tell everyone what to do, to, for the government to even impose wearing of masks on everyone, that whenever you're going out, you have to wear your mask. The move by the federal government to gradually ease the total lockdown order is to savage the economy and give Nigerians the opportunity also to carry out their day-to-day -day activities. And so, as the total lockdown order is being relaxed, one message that is being put to Nigerians is the need to comply with all the laid down rules and regulations to ensure that the coronavirus pandemic does not grow out of proportion. In Abuja, Doi, Dia, NT News. And in his avowed determination to open up the economy of Akwaibum State, Governor Udom Emmanuel has announced a relaxation of some movement regulations and restriction order in the state. This is contained in the governor's message to the people. Susan Asuko reports that the use of face masks as announced by the governor is now compulsory. In his message, Governor Udom Emmanuel noted that the relaxation of movement and restriction order in the state, which takes effect from Monday, May 4, 2020, is in accordance with the guidelines from the federal government. Top on the guidelines for relaxing the restriction is a compulsory use of nose mask by every person in public places, commercial buses and offices while declaring that schools, religious gatherings, hospitality services, social gatherings, funerals, parties remain closed till further notice, Governor Emmanuel said market will be opened three times a week within stipulated time. Face masks must be worn and social distancing must be observed by all. All commissioners and permanent secretaries should work out modalities that will get the staff of their respective ministries to return to work in batches. The governor also announced that non-essential interstate movements remain prohibited except those moving agricultural produce, medical equipment and personnel. He stressed specific guidelines for public transport operators. Taxis must carry a maximum of three passengers, one in front 
and two behind. And buses must not carry more than two persons per row. A dusk to dawn curfew has also been imposed across the state from the hour of 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. with effect from Monday, May 4, 2020. In Uyo, Susan Asoko, NTA News. And banning interstate commute commuting uh, in, uh, definitely is one of the short ways to flatten the curve of the coronavirus pandemic given the way Nigerians live and move. Archibong Basi at the Cross River, Akwaibom State's boundary says findings reveal the stopping the community transmission of the virus without restriction on the interstate movement will be a herculean tax due to the lifestyle of the people which negates social distancing, hence the need for strict adherence through protocols against the COVID-19 spread. For those rendering essential services, the Cross River State government, as part of its proactive measures to prevent the importation of the virus into the state, had directed a lockdown of all its boundaries and international borders. And so right now, we are here at the Calabai to Head Bridge to monitor the situation. In compliance with the federal government's directive, and I can tell you that Refusing known essential service providers entry into the state has been a Herculean tax. It's even more difficult at the international border where we basically have to hold back close to 50,000 Cameroonians. You find people who come in, they pick the speedboats from there and they now bust somewhere where we cannot see. You can see the VIA auto truck there. It's to barricade here. Once it is fixed, Nobody transvers from Aquaibum into Cross River. The benefits of this move by the federal government will make tackling and defeating the pandemic a lot easier than when it is allowed to spread to every part of the country. The father has a VP, had to buy the tablet in Port Harcourt. He's part of saving life. However, many people are of the opinion that banning interstate travels is not the magic wand to stop the spread of the virus, but the implementation of directives aimed at halting the spread of the disease and taking individual responsibility to join in ending the pandemic. From the Calabai to Headbridge at Chibombasi, NTA News. And following the agreement by the 36 state governors and the director by directive rather by the president to ban interstate movement as part of measures to control the spread of coronavirus. Abdurrahman Usman Jubila visited the Sokoto, Zanfara and Sokoto Kebi state boundaries to monitor the situation. This is the Sokoto, Zanfara border precisely in Imasa village uh, which is uh, almost 70 kilometers away from Sokoto, the state capital of Sokoto state and 170 kilometers away from Gusaudi, Zamfara state capital. We are presently here and are monitoring the situation on the interstate lockdown. The roads are deserted, not business as usual, with few vehicular movements. At the state entry, the presence of security and medical personnel to monitor the movement of those coming in and going out of the state is taken very serious. Though we couldn't get anyone to speak to us on the situation, but we observed strict compliance with the restriction of movement. Most of the vehicles coming in at the entry point were those carrying essential items. The driver and his assistant had to go through medical examination before proceeding on the journey. At the boundary of Sokoto and Kebi State, some drivers who tried to defy the directives were sent back by the security personnel in Sokoto, Abraham Usman Jibrila, NTA News. On the Inspector General of Police, IGP Mohamed Adamo has commended the Divisional Crime Officer to a Rewa Police Division, ASP Adeemo Ogunyemi, for his uncommon restraint and professionalism in the face of unprovoked attack. As shown in a viral video where a woman identified as Kendi Afalake was seen assaulting him unchallenged and without retaliation while he was carrying out the COVID-19 enforcement duties at Bola Gunti Okeola area of Eru. 
Goa or your state. A statement by the police public relations officer DCP Frank Uba notes that the said woman also assaulted two female police officers. The IGP notes that since the commencement of the COVID-19 enforcement duties, a total of 27 police personnel have suffered series of attacks and assaults from members of the public at different times and different locations. Meanwhile, the IGP has directed the Commission of Police Oil Command to carry out a discreet investigation into the Erua attack on the police officer and ensure that justice is done. And in Nasarawa, the state has recorded the first death from the coronavirus pandemic of a state house, house of assembly member representing Nasara Central, Suleiman Adamu. Following the development, the state assembly complex shall remain closed, while members have been directed to self-isolate until conclusion of proper examination by medical personnel. Meanwhile, uh, the government has announced total shutdown of five local government areas, including Lafia, the state capital, to ensure containment of the virus spread. The Abia state government says one of the two index cases of COVID-19 patients that was first tested uh, positive is now tested negative and will soon be discharged from the isolation center in Umahia. Governor Okezi Iqbazu made the disclosure while addressing newsmen after a meeting that held with stakeholders on the update of COVID-19 in the state. Chinyere Okoli reports. Governor Ibazu noted that the patient who is the oldest coronavirus patient in the southeast zone has shown marked clinical improvement and met the NCDC national criteria for the discharge of COVID-19 patients from isolation centers. According to the governor, all those tested, including those with symptoms of COVID-19, have all proved negative. His remarkable improvement is a positive highlight in the clinical management of this novel disease and we are grateful to the team of healthcare workers directly or indirectly responsible for this victory. On the lockdown exercise in the state, Governor Bazu gave guidelines towards easing the lockdown, stating that commercial tricycles will carry only two passengers and mini boxes, not more than five passengers, all wearing fixed masks. He noted that schools were to still remain closed while radio classroom initiative to be sustained. He maintained that leaders of churches are not to allow large congregations during each stream of service as buckets of water and hand sanitizers to be provided at the entrance of the church. In Omwaiha Chinyere Okoli, NTA News. And President Mahmoud Buhari has commissioned commiserated with the families of three universities of Potakot students reportedly murdered by their kidnappers and their bodies buried in a shallow grave in April. The president also extended condolences to the university authorities and the River State Government over the unfortunate incident. Describing the tragic occurrence as sad and heinous, President Buhari regretted that the evil perpetrators have cut short the prospective bright journey of the youths. He prays that God will comfort all those who mourn these young students and grant their souls eternal rest. A statement by the senior special assistant to the president, media and publicity, Gerbeshe, who said President Buhari, while noting that an Nigerian police anti-kidnapping unit has apprehended one of the suspected perpetrators, has directed the police authorities to intensify research for the remaining suspects and bring them to justice. And that concludes the news at 7. Many thanks for watching and comfort and madu.
Hello, welcome. This 